legislator. First, we're going to talk about uh, this guy. Because what kind of best man and big brother would I be if I didn't embarrass him? So, we use this microphone as a weapon on the just said. For the people that didn't know Mike when he was younger, let me paint an ugly picture for you. Mike always had this weird, like, mullet helmet hair kind of thing. So he was like 15. Like, he wasn't even like a little bit of And then to go with it, he had a weird personality. And like, when I say odd, I mean, this guy like, used to line up all his hot wheels. <laughs> it is a real thing. He used to line up all his hot wheels, and I mean, like, perfect lines, like OCD, Google Bros. By size, shape, color, whatever he felt that day. Not a single one was out of place. And he'd stand there for, like, hours and stare at these cars. And then out of nowhere, just smash them with a hammer. <laughs> Mike was a different dude, though. He used to have his t-shirt that said, and I quote, Go away, I have enough friends. <laughs> so people laughed and they knew Mike. But he wore his shirt, but they're the ones who ain't, who ain't laughing and didn't know him. Let me explain. Um, irony. <laughs> Isn't a strong enough word for that shirt? Mike was not a very popular dude growing up. <laughs> until, until that fateful day when he decided he was going to mind his own business and walk through where all the older kids were hanging out. And one of the older kids, and none of us other older kids really liked, started a picture on him. Just called him names, whatever. Mike just walked and didn't say nothing to him. He keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Mike just calmly walks up, beats the crap out of this kid, and then just walks home like nothing happened. Like, it was, like, weird. And then ever since, since none of us older kids really liked that dude, it was like, all right, well, Mike's all right. <laughs> we all had a wild so time. So from then, we all did. from then, over the next couple of years, Mike decided <laughs> he had this little skill in fighting, he started using it to his advantage when we were bored. And we go to like a mall or something. We might have seen some kid, some random kid he didn't know, stranger, group of kids, didn't matter, 15 kids, didn't matter. Might have throw a shoulder into one of them or throw something, hit a spitball at one of them, you know, whatever. And then that one day, he did it, and this guy's girlfriend starts cussing him out. And then all of a sudden, our catchphrase for the summer was born. Without hesitation, my friend Ronald looks at the lady and says, Don't get your boyfriend beat up. <laughs> <laughs> we used it better than every chance we could. <laughs> so we'll fast forward. I don't want to embarrass him too much. And I don't want to take a part of your time because I'm a big guy and I don't like wearing this suit standing in front of me. <laughs> so. Fast forward to Mike and Gunn and meet each other, and suddenly my crazy, fight picking, trouble making brother stopped looking for his next fight because he found his soulmate, and in doing so, eventually found Jesus. Now bear with me because this is when it's going to get a little show for us, and maybe I'm a practice with this. I'm like, not, I'm shaking, but I might not cry. So my brother is always been my best friend. He's taken a lot of abuse out of me as an older brother, but no matter what, he's always been right by my side. There isn't a bond out there stronger than ours, and I thank God every day for it. Now, a couple years back, Mike and Kelly started the How to Save Life movement. They reached out to save a bunch of our friends who were going away for their time due to, you know, addiction, whatever, suicide, stuff like that. And what they didn't, they, they, they reached out to help our friends and they didn't realize that they were helping me too. I was in a, a you know, my party stage and, you know, mid-20s, you know, living it up. And going to How to Save a Life, I learned three very, very powerful word, words that have gotten me through quite a lot in my life over the last couple of years. And without those three words, and without a man, and uh, Greg Castillo, I never would have gotten engaged with Sarah. I never would have had my second daughter with Sarah. And I would be the happiest father in the world. If it wasn't for Mike and Kelly, I never would have met that man. And I never would have learned the three words that have brought me through everything. And that is God is good. So finally, 
by your side have been my savior. There's no two better people in the world to serve this form. I love you both. I thank you both from the bottom of my heart. Cheers. 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 Cheers.